we lift our alleluias to the Lord. In the Gospel of Luke, the first two chapters, there are four canticles or songs that are lifting praises to God. Exactly what we've already had a chance to do this morning. Um, the, the four canticles, uh, some of them reflect back on the whole history of, of what God has done through the Old Testament. Um, uh, Zacharias especially looks a little bit at the work and calling of John the Baptist, but mostly, especially all of these point to the work and ministry and life of Jesus Christ. Now, when things are repeated in Scripture, it often means it's like an exclamation point. This is something to really pay attention to. And I think in the way the scriptures read in the Gospel of Luke that um, these canticles, these poems um, and songs are a way to slow us down as we read, to take time to really savor the story of God with us, which is really the central, center point of our Christian faith. In the first of these songs, Mary sings out while she's pregnant. She had gone to see her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth was pregnant too with the child that would be John the Baptist. But Mary um, is just overcome with joy, and she starts singing those beautiful, beautiful words. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Her son goes on to talk that, to realize how blessed she is. Her song talks about the, the hungry will be fed and the lowly will be lifted up and the high and mighty will be brought down so that there is justice in the world. And she sings this song with such um, conviction and faith and joy that she proclaims those things have already been done. Zechariah is the second of the canticles, and we're going to be talking about him in a minute, but another one is an entire choir of angels, the great company of angels from heaven who appear on the night that, uh, that Jesus is born to shepherds out in a field. And the words that they sing are the heart of the Christmas message. Already the stores are full of uh, advertising and some decorations and sales for Christmas. Um, one of the radio stations is playing 24-hour Christmas music, the secular you know, Christmas songs that we love. Um, the Christmas movies are all over TV already. Um, it's so easy to get sort of distracted and pulled in to all that secular part of Christmas. And that can be really fun and wonderful but we too, we still need to keep our focus on what Christmas is really all about. My favorite Christmas show is A Charlie Brown Christmas. And I, I hope some of you remember, um, Charlie Brown has this ugly little Christmas tree and the Christmas um, show that the children are trying to put together is just everything's going wrong. And, Everything in his life seems to be going wrong. And finally, in frustration, he just calls out, this is a disaster. <laughs> and then he asks the question, um, doesn't anyone know what Christmas is all about? And Linus comes forward with his little blanket, and he says, I can tell you, Charlie Brown, what Christmas is all about. And he starts quoting from the Gospel of Luke, he talks about the angel who comes to the shepherds in the field and how the glory of the Lord shines all around them. Luke tells about the angel who says, don't be afraid. And for in this day, a baby is born in Bethlehem, who is Christ the Lord. And then the great company of heavenly hosts appear, praising God and singing. And this is the canticle part. Um, they, the, the angels start singing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. 
the final canticle in, in, Matthew, or in Luke is an old man named Simeon. He has spent years every day at the temple waiting and yearning and hoping to see the Messiah. And Mary and Joseph come in carrying their baby, eight days old, for dedication at the temple. Simeon recognizes this baby and starts singing praises to God. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. The salvation that you have prepared for all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of the, your people, Israel. Now, I know that officially Advent doesn't start till next week. In the church calendar, Advent is the beginning of the year. And through the year, we look at the life and teachings of Christ and other portions of Scripture. But today is officially Christ the King Sunday which is the last day of the church year, when we see the full culmination of the life and ministry of Christ, we see Christ, or celebrate Christ raised up as our king. But I love, because these are close together in scripture, to me, there's just a beautiful symmetry in these four canticles. And they all have similar themes. They all talk about God's redemption, God's blessing, and fulfilled promises. Mary, Zechariah, the shepherds of Simeon were all surprised when God intervened in their life. And so this morning, I'd like us to think a little bit about how we respond when God comes to us. It may be to call us for some special work, or comfort us, or save us, or bless us. What kind of praise do you have to offer God today? Zechariah had to wait a long time before he could speak or sing his words of praise. Um, in the Gospel of Luke, we read that Zechariah was a priest, and one day when he went into the temple, his lot was drawn, and he was given the responsibility of going into one of the inner sanctums of the temple to give the offering of incense. And when he went in and lit the candle or lit the incense, um, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And the first thing the angel says is, Fear not. And that's the same thing with the shepherds and with Mary. Sometimes, you know, the angels, when they appear, can be a little startling. But the message is, Fear not. Um, he says, um, Elizabeth, your wife, will have a child, and his name will be John. He will be a joy and a delight to you. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he will bring many people back to God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. Now, Zechariah can't believe this, and I feel a little bit sympathetic for Zechariah here. <laughs> um, I know when something radical and totally unexpected happens in my life, I need to start asking questions. I don't want to be sure I understand what's going on. I want to have a chance to think through how I should respond. You know, it takes me a little time to deal with something totally unexpected. But Gabriel saw something different than that in Zechariah. He saw that it wasn't just trying to understand, it was total disbelief that this could happen. And so Gabriel tells him, God sent me with this news, and because you didn't believe, you will now be silent until this baby is born. And so we jump ahead nine months, and indeed the baby is born, and that promise is fulfilled. Zechariah is asked about the baby's name, and for the first time he can say a word. And he says, John. And as soon as he is able to follow the original instructions that the angel had given, suddenly Zechariah's mouth and spirit are opened. And the words that he's been saving for nine months come pouring out of him. And out of this great silence 
for all that he must have been thinking about and all the emotions and all, you know, everything that had been going on for nine whole months, the first thing he wants to do is praise God. He begins not with thanking God for his son at this moment, but he begins by saying, blessed be the God of Israel who has visited and redeemed his people. Now that's pretty good stuff. (laughs) When the Lord visits the people, it means that God is coming down and getting involved in our lives. When God redeems the people, it means that God is taking action to set us free. Zechariah talks about the calling of salvation that is going to be coming in a new way to the people. And he knows that somehow his son will be involved in that great work and that his son will be involved in the work of a great king from the house of David. About six months later, after John is born, another baby is born who was indeed from the house of David. Zechariah remembers and celebrates the covenant of, that God had given to Abraham back centuries before, that through Abraham, the descendants all of, in all of the world would be blessed. And now that promise is coming true. It's not the birth of John, but John would help prepare the way for the one coming after him. And that next baby to be born was Jesus. So for Zechariah, the first part of the canticle is kind of the big stuff, the big themes of scripture. But in the second half, Zechariah gets to speak directly to his son, John. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins, because of the tender mercies of our God. Isn't that a lovely, lovely phrase? The tender mercies of our God. By which the rising sun shall visit us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the ways of peace. Parents often have big dreams for their children. And Zechariah already knows what the work and ministry of John will be. John will be the forerunner of the Lord. He will prepare the way, preach salvation and forgiveness. John the Baptist brought the tender mercies of God to the people by pointing them to the one coming after him, to the Messiah. Christ is the one who brings light into our darkness, a light that even dispels the shadow of death. We all have some dark places in our lives, some dark shadows, maybe things that we're afraid, where times or places where we're afraid or somehow unable to find the light to deal with that problem or that relationship or, or that issue. So where does God need to intervene in your life today? The good news is that Christ has already come. All the things that Mary yearned for, all the things the angels declared to the shepherds, all the peace that Simeon waited for, all the things that Zechariah spoke of, and all the things that John the Baptist preached, have come in the person of Christ. Redemption, salvation, forgiveness of sins, the tender mercies of our God, the light that conquers darkness and death, and our feet being guided in the path of peace. Zechariah foresaw all that and sang about it um, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. John grew up and carried out his mission to set the stage for the coming of Christ. And Jesus, of course, fulfilled it all. He redeems us still today. He sets us free from sin and death. 
We have the light of relationship with God shining in our hearts and the Holy Spirit giving us the gift of faith. This is the light that dispels darkness. This is the light that conquers death. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and in him there is no darkness at all. So today we join Zechariah in singing a song of salvation. In order to join in, you don't have to have a son named John. You just have to know the one whose way John prepared. Because with faith in Christ, we can do and sing with great joy. Blessed be the God of Israel, for God has visited and redeemed his people. Amen. <laughs>